Is it this or that? If I seek, I'll find. Get up and dance. Hey. <laughs> See, I know all this while those who have been criticizing my makeup, you think I don't see your comments? <laughs> You think I do not see your comments. Now that my makeup is improving, I'm just hearing crickets on this, my channel. Eh? Mary Kay ambassadors, Mark Right Hand Women, Una oh, no, they comment again. Please, please, please. Tell the big girl that her makeup is improving. Tell her in that comment section. <laughs> Anyway, guys, hello, hello. Welcome back again to my YouTube channel. It is your favorite baby girl. Your one and only. <laughs> Mama Dinah Ekuwe, me in the building. And today, we're back on this, my favorite chair. I've actually missed going personal with you guys. I can't even remember the last sit down video. We are back to reality. And if you're wondering if my husband is back, no, I couldn't wait. I, I took out, <laughs> I took out on weekend by force. I gave on week a serious burial and we're back on wigs now until God knows when. But yeah, I asked you guys to send me questions about one year since moving to Saudi Arabia. Um, 30th of November, 2023, we'll make it one year <laughs> yeah, 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 this year. <laughs> we'll make it one year since moving here, joining my husband, everybody, me, the kids, and all of that. And I have, I have a lot, a lot of questions. Usually, I start with Instagram. I don't know, for some reason, I start with Instagram. But today, let's start with the YouTube community and then proceed to Instagram. The first question here is, how do you make sure you stay motivated and positive? Because three kids can really take a toll on your mental health. You're doing amazing. Thank you so much. Um, mm, well, let me not more diet. Thank you, my sister. Um, I think I've talked about this in previous sit downs. Routine. That's the only solution, especially if you are a dependent in Saudi Arabia with children. If you're in a similar situation like me, where we live in a village, no English schools, we're still contemplating if the kids should go to school or not. Um, Routine, routine is the only thing. If not, it's insanity. <laughs> if you have toddlers, toddlers, toddlers. If you have a child that is reasonable, eight and up, that you know they can do certain things themselves independently, you do not have a problem. But if you have toddlers, toddlers, four and under, you must have routine. If not, your headache will be headaching you every day, my sister. How I stay motivated and positive. Sincerely, I, when I moved newly, I was miserable. I was miserable because I wasn't understanding, you know, the, it took me a while. It took me like six to seven months to get a hang of a lot of things with the kids, you know, get a routine in place consistently. You just have to ginger yourself. If they're not ginger, you ginger yourself. You have to motivate yourself. Nobody will motivate you, not even your husband. Nobody will motivate you. So you need to look for something that inspires you. If he's watching other moms, if he's watching something, or if he's praying, or if he's taking a walk with the kids, I don't know. Just find, you have to ginger yourself. Do you miss home? And if you can change anything about your relocation, what would it be? and why yes i miss home i miss my family i miss my brothers my mom my dad my cousins my street people <laughs> my village people self i miss everybody um if i was to change something about this relocation it would be joining my husband the first time he came i knowing what i know now Obviously, I wouldn't have waited a whole year, done the whole long distance thing because social media gave us all the rubbish gist about Saudi. Um, yeah, if I was to change something about our relocation, it would definitely be joining him because I would have had an upper hand in a lot of things. Wouldn't have been here. <laughs> we'll probably be in the hospital's compound. You know, I would have had a say in a lot of things, but 
it's still good you know it's good please are fruits like popo watermelon etc sold in saudi arabia i don't know about popo i don't think i've seen popo here in the village where i stay our kurayat but i've seen watermelons everywhere they're e everywhere they're everywhere different sizes you will see ones bigger than the ones we have in nigeria they're literally everywhere if you live in saudi please share in the comments for duru precious if you've seen popo anywhere popo is a kind of fruit wait it's already been a year since we watched your relocation vlog where did time my sister <laughs> hey my sister no questions mama but i just want to say to you that i love you oh thank you so much carol um how is the accommodation houses like as first time individual and how much can someone spend before settling fully um with accommodation i really i've done a video highlighting the cost of living here or the cost of us living in saudi probably i'll link that video in the description area so do check it out um but for houses here, it depends. It depends. Do you want to live in big cities? Do you want to live in villages? If you want to live in popular places like Riyadh, Jeddah, Koba, all the big, big names. If you want to live in those places, obviously accommodation may be a bit um, expensive. But if you relocate to a village like ours, you will pay little to nothing compared to what people in big cities are paying for accommodation how much can someone spend before settling fully also that depends on the type of job that you have many jobs here especially healthcare professional jobs i can only speak for doctors and most oil company workers they sponsor they are flights, they pay for your flights, they pay for your, if your wife is coming, your children, they cover your flight. You don't need to pay for all of that. Some companies or some establishments, they give accommodation. So it's your choice to stay in the accommodation. It's called compound here. Some people live in compounds and some people choose to live outside of compounds. Yeah. So it depends on your job and the city where you're going to. Mama Dinah, why are you so beautiful? The glow is given. Yes, thank you so much, period. Um, can you advise someone to relocate to Saudi Arabia with kids? It depends. Are you joining your husband? If you're joining your husband as a dependent, it may not be too bad. Obviously, depending on your husband's job and his salary and a lot of things, location, if you can sustain you and the children, then it's fine. If you want to come and work here, the question is, where do you want to live? I hope it's not village where there are no schools. I don't know if you're Muslim or Christian. Um, yeah. If you're moving to Jeddah or Riyadh, obviously there are loads of English schools to enroll your children. They are not cheap. That's all I can say. They're not cheap because I've heard prizes from the video I did in the past. I've heard prizes of people putting their kids in private schools in Jeddah. It's not cheap. There is no free education here as an expat. So you're going to have to pay. A lot of factors you have to consider. Are you the primary applicant? Are you a dependent? How old are your kids? Are they still toddlers? Are they grown ups? A lot of things. So this question, I can't really say much because it's uh, no context you know how has life been for you in saudi arabia comparing it to nigeria <laughs> i don't know the grammar that i want to use that will make it understandable i would say the standard of living here for me compared to nigeria has been 100 it, uh, standard premium I would say um, the quality of life, this is subjective and this is personal to me. I feel like is is in whoa, 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 whoa at 50%, 50, 45, 50, 45. When I talk about quality of life to somebody, quality of life may be everything that standard of life or standard of living is for me. I would choose support 
over staying alone with children. It ain't funny. It ain't, <laughs> sis, it ain't funny. So yeah, that's the long and short answer to that question. I'm trying to answer these questions fast, fast, so we can cover a lot of people asked on Instagram, so I need to cover many people's questions. Um, what, what best way would you advise someone to relocate to Saudi? Um, definitely come in legally. <laughs> don't, don't, <laughs> don't come here illegally. Um, try if you can get a professional job, especially in healthcare, nurses here, doctors here, medical laboratory, anything within the healthcare industry, you know you're earning a decent wage that you can even move your family, you know, if you'd like. If you're working as a teacher, teachers are in demand here, especially English teachers. Many people here, many Saudis, the locals are you know, catching up, most of them are catching up with English and yeah, they're always recruiting from America, from, if you're a good English teacher, they're looking for you here. Um, engineers, Aramco, or your company, if you can get in through that route, amazing. Another route that is underestimated that I heard from a live video in my second channel from a viewer is study route them not explain and well give me many people do not know that you can move to saudi arabia via student route there are so many good schools here in fact the the way they screen their ranking worldwide is unbeatable is truly unbeatable there are top schools here let me confess, let me not lie, when the guy plugged me in, I applied. I applied to one of the top schools here. I was rejected. But there are so many benefits that come with the studying. Just like most workers, they relocate you. you the only thing you need to do is get visa, pay for visa. You know me, I don't wear share plug. I will help your ministry. That is me. <laughs> if you're a dynamite, you're getting this free info. If you even are already in Saudi and you're a resident, you have your ikama and all of that, and you're looking for what to do, apply to schools, undergraduate, masters. So many schools are open now. If you need more info, you can email me, you can send me a message on Instagram. I've applied to like two or three schools. And yeah, one has rejected me so far. I'm not ashamed to say it, but let me know. Let me not open my pint here. But let me tell you the pecs. If you're wondering, well, why will I go to Saudi Arabia? They teach in English, American curriculum. They pay you to study per month. If you're doing master's undergraduate, they pay you over a thousand dollars for for masters and phd two thousand two thousand five three thousand dollars, and they give you allowance, free health care, free accommodation, free. I don't want to go on. Look, just check Google. The media really did a lot to Saudi. And for your information, the guy that plugged me, he studied here for years before moving to Canada. So yeah, he studied, got a job here as a lecturer, studied, uh, worked here for donkey years before moving to Canada. So they play. <laughs> they play i don't plug you don't say i did not plug you to some don't say you did not you don't get anything as a dynamite from this channel so if you're looking to leave nigeria asap start looking for undergraduate or master's um, scholarship scholarship you're not paying shit by just check on google undergraduate scholarship blah 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 in saudi arabia everything you can do it yourself online within 20 30 minutes if you have everything you can submit let me plug you um, please though, I need advice on my YouTube channel is because of you I started but I feel so shy putting my lifestyle on YouTube. Please, how do you do it? The confidence because I don't know if I'm afraid or what. Favor, if, I mean, YouTube doesn't mean that you must put your personal life on YouTube. That's what people do not understand. You mustn't put your personal life on YouTube. Your personal life may not even be your strength. It may be something else. It may be your craft. It may be something you enjoy doing. It may be just talking. So you can start off if you have this lack of confidence or, you know, your self-esteem is not there yet. You're still building on it. You can start off with faceless channels where you discuss things that you like, discuss um, stuff that you enjoy. 
you know, just start faceless using pictures, graphics, videos, and all of that. Then as time goes on, you can then begin to do sit down videos talking about things that interest you. You mustn't put your personal, us, we no know, we start seven years ago. If we knew what we know now, <laughs> we know for put our personal life, I wouldn't even advise anybody. Even when I teach, I don't advise my students to carry their personal life. If you want to do it, it's your prerogative, but I don't recommend it. I don't advise it. I start with value. What's the value you want to give? What do you want to bring? Don't just come and say you want to be a YouTuber for YouTube's sake, because lifestyle is even dying somehow. Let's not lie. Time truly does fly. It seems just like... It seems like just yesterday I watched your Saudi relocation video. Can't believe it's already a year. Mm -hmm. Me too. Are you regretting moving to Saudi? Do I regret it? At first I did. I did. I'm not going to lie. I regretted it for the first... Most of you know why. Because before I left, my mom... <sighs> my mom just... Yeah... Things just started manifesting. Immediately we left. She was in the hospital the whole of that first month we moved here. I mean, until May, June, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling it. I just wanted to go back. I almost booked my flight. It was that horrible because I just couldn't stand my mom in Nigeria alone because my siblings are scattered. My sister is in Ghana. My brothers are not in Port Harcourt. So... Yeah, it killed me for the first few months here, and I, <laughs> I nearly moved back to Nigeria. But we thank God. The regrets, I would say, is slowly evaporating. So, um, yeah, I'm just thankful and grateful for being here, family all together, and everything. Yeah. How do you handle loneliness? Lonely? With three children. <laughs> loneliness? Nah, this question, if you rephrase it as, how do you handle lack of support? <laughs> if it's loneliness, you can never be lonely with children. You can never be lonely with toddlers. You can never. Eh? You have cho-cho-cho-cho-cho everywhere. Baza, bozo, boza. <laughs> how can you be lonely? Yeah, nah, nah, nah. You can't be, you cannot be lonely. Um, yeah, so that's that for YouTube community. I don't want to answer Jesus 21 minutes. That means I only have like 10 minutes for Instagram. I'm sorry, Instagram people, I, they always favor on us. So, me on a, no chop mirror. How are you really? This November, I'm not gonna lie, my spirits, my spirit is high. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good, sis. I'm good. Thank you so much for asking. Are there churches in Saudi Arabia? I've answered this question like three times on this channel. The first time I said no. Some people said in the comments that there are churches in Riyadh and Jeddah. The second time I said yes. Some people commented in the uh, comment section. There are no churches. So I don't even know which one to believe again. All I can say is me, I've not seen church here. Where I am, there is no church. The nearest church to me is Jordan, is in Jordan. And Jordan is like 40 minutes away because we live up north. We live close to the border. So Jordan is just right across. And I can't be traveling one hour to Jordan just to go to church every Sunday. But I need you people, Christians living in Riyadh and Jeddah, please. I need a confirmation. Is there a public church? I don't mean gathering. People go and do fellowship inside house. Is there a church standing in Riyadh or Jeddah? I need sincere answers in the comments. Thank you. Um, I love your strength. Thank you for being true to us. I love and celebrate you. No question. Thank you so much, Maria. Do you plan on moving back to Nigeria? That is the goal. <laughs> the goal is to move back. It's not planned. It's the goal. It's not a plan. It's, it's not something I'm hiding. I'm going to move back to Nigeria. It's not something that, it's not a hidden something on this channel, yeah? Hello, Dinah. Sorry, not asking in a bad way, but why are your children yet to start school? When their papa come on this channel, Mona direct this question. I don't have a say here, really. He knows why he's 
still contemplating on whether they should start or not. How do you cope with your sex life being that you are the only one taking care of kids? Sister Oge, what do you mean coping? I'm coping very well. Like I said, put the kids in a routine. My kids, they sleep in the children's room. Me and my husband, we sleep together. Once my son turned one year, he joined his siblings. I did not marry to allow my children to come and interfere with my quokrekorism. Mm -mm. Mbam -bam -bam. No. <laughs> I did not go through one year long distance to come here. I battled distance. I'm now coming here to battle with children. Nah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. nah. There, is, there is zero. Zero interference with our sex life. We do what we want, when we want, and how we want. So <laughs> that's all I can say. Is it possible to ship African food to Saudi? I don't know, I haven't tried it before, but um, if there are, you know, Nigerian stores in Riyadh, Jeddah, definitely there should be a way to cargo or get foods here. But I heard that to get stuff here, it's, it, it can be expensive, I really don't know. What is one thing you know now you wish someone had told you before relocating? I would say um, <laughs> food. I've talked about this in one of my vlogs. Food, 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 food. Leave everything else. And I know there are people who have come to say, oh, all these people that lie to you, people that clothes is not important, getting clothes is not necessary, you need to get clothes, you need to get this. Sister, here in Saudi, I'm telling you, get food. Because where are you going to serve with the clothes? Where do you want to slay with the clothes? <laughs> where do you want to go? Where you know you are probably going to wear all black or a buyer or something. So I'm telling you that food is more important than slaying. Food, food, food. If you have three boxes, two and a half should be filled with food. If you're a woman, get wigs. Get hair products. Relaxer, wig, gel, um, edge control makeup, all of that, especially if you're brown skin, dark skin, you're not going to easily get your shade here. So you need to sort all those things out. Those are the things that I wish someone had told me, you know, before. In fact, I just wish someone had a YouTube channel like this. Imagine if someone had a YouTube channel like mine. Do you know that part of the reason why I'm documenting my life in Saudi is because nobody did. Nobody helped me and I know a few people who have helped, not just relocate, but giving them ginger to want to move and join their partner or even come here for work. So um, I wish, I very much wish that someone actually had something like this. Someone had something like I, I have right now. I don't think I would have thought twice about moving here. Will you stay in the apartment or will you move to the hospital's compound? We day here, Gidiba. One thing most people don't know, if, I mean, if you're working as a doctor and they give you the compound option, if you choose to live outside, there is a yearly allowance that they pay you that when you calculate it, you see that staying outside, you get more money and you spend less because obviously here is a village, cost of living is already lower than, you know, big cities. So plus the allowance money. You get. If you don't get it, forget about it. Mama Diana Biko, when are you coming to Riyadh? Been waiting for you. No, be if I come now, and I call, you will now do me a ghosting. No, be when I come now, I don't go see this your comment again. No, Debbie, Debbie. No, be when I come now, I don't go see you go off phone. No, be when I come, I say make we do meet, meet and greet. You don't go appear. You don't go show. You don't call me, oh. you don't call me. No problem. Very, very soon we'll be in Riyadh, okay? It's been a whole year. Sorry. It's been a whole one year. Describe your 2023 in three words because, man, this year was really yearly. It's, it's still yearly for a lot of us. It's, it, nothing spoiled. It's just at some point you just accept your circumstances you just because if you stay miserable now you go now you go lose you just have to accept that this is the phase where you are this is how it is 
and this may last longer than you expected. So instead of just wallowing in the misery, it's to put up a positive front. People are going through a lot. It's not just you or me. Many people that you see smiling and making you laugh, they are going through a lot. So um, yeah, how would I describe this year? Sad for the first few months, at least January to April, May, sad. I would call it sad. Um, gracious, I don't know if that's the word I should use. Patient, gracious, um, yeah. And it's been a discovery. <laughs> it's been a discovery. Um, not just the discovery of a lot of things, challenges or whatsoever, of self. There are so many things I've been capable of doing, but excuses and circumstances. Um, this year really, really showed me that I'm a strong woman, no, no B. I know people throw around that word strong. I'm, I'm actually a strong woman and I, I, I'm blowing my trumpet. I'm a strong woman. Now only me know it, but I don't see. But um, yeah, how were you able to lose weight after childbirth? You think I've lost weight? I don't think again, I'm more. See my cheeks, they are growing again. They are getting puffed again. Look, I lost weight in the middle of the year. Now I've gained it all back. Even I said I'm gonna go back to my misery era. <laughs> Because this positive era, no, they allow me to lose weight. You know, they allow me to think, say I need to go gym, I need to play more Afro depression, I need to do things, you know. I don't know. I don't think I've gotten any far. I'm still stuck at 78. I've been not looking at the things I eat. Before I used to do one meal a day, the few kgs that I lost, the few kilos that I lost, I lost doing um, intermittent fasting, I won't eat till evening. Like all day I won't eat till evening. And then I'll just eat that one. It may be junk, it may be whatsoever. I just didn't used to look at it. And then obviously that period I was also going to gym, so maybe that helped. But there is nothing serious I did. <laughs> I look left, I look right. Everybody's doing weight loss surgery. I'm not saying I want to do it though. I... <laughs> You guys know my stance. I've been at my take on, you know, anything surgery. But um, um, I think I look good now. I don't know. I, 78 kg is bad for my BMI. But looking at me now and looking at me 11 months ago, I like me now. So let's enjoy this weight until we drop a bit more. Maybe 2024, okay? Let's not talk about weight loss right now. Stress is not allowing me to lose weight. Um, hi, Dinah. What was the hardest adjustment you experienced since moving to Saudi Arabia? Support. I have still not adjusted. Children, two, four, seven. I have not adjusted my sister. Support, support, support. They did not explain that part, give me. <laughs> they did not... I should have crammed it when people were talking about it. Obviously, I knew that this was how it was going to be, but I didn't think that if I enter toilet, my mama will enter to see, ah, what is mommy bringing out from under her pint? <laughs> no one prepared me for, everywhere you go, my children are empty and everywhere you go, they follow you. <laughs> you enter kitchen, they follow you. They don't hear your voice, they enter room. You guys haven't seen me editing video when the children... I edit video with them. Some will be under the table. Some will be hitting my chair. So it's just for me to put my headphones and just focus on my video. For, they even encourage me to be consistent because it's almost now like bonding time for us. So that's the hardest adjustment. And I'm still not used to it. I'm still not used to it. So yeah. How are you able to keep calm with the kids? I've got to, and it's so frustrating. Who said I'm calm? <laughs> Forget what you're seeing on YouTube. If I say, when I bring out camera, it's, it looks like they calm down. Everybody's looking sweet. I see comments, oh, your kids, they're so harmless. They're so cute. They're... 
when they want to terrorize you. <laughs> now you go wrong commot for us. Seriously. Mm, mm, mm. They don't keep calm. Oh. Now fake life you they see for this YouTube. I'm not obviously documenting all the higgy haga that they commit here every single day. Like I clean the house. You won't believe it. I know people say, oh, leave it, leave it till the end of the day, leave it till whenever you get strength. I just can't. Like, I don't know what's wrong. Maybe it's just me. I'm the one suffering myself, but I, I don't feel okay. My head doesn't feel, especially, there's no other place to go to. There's no balcony, there's nothing. This is just our space. So I can't even stand the house being dirty. So as they're scattering, give it two hours, I'm back to arrange, I'm back to sweep, I'm back to do stuff. And the way they scatter, you can't, once they start, you can't tell one person, if you're telling one person to keep, unless you want the whole house or this whole building to be here. Anyway, my neighbors, they know. They know what I'm going through. It's my neighbors that know that my kids are not calm. <laughs> they know. <laughs> How has living in a new country affected the dynamics of your marriage? I think this will be a whole sit down video because I don't want you guys to get just my own perspective. My husband has to put chook mouth inside this matter because I've been talking about me, me, me all this time. I need to hear from him. And I went from, let me just give you guys a short story. I went from waiting the play to, okay, Shayna, like this we go day, day, to, okay, make I day my day. So if you don't understand that, wait for my husband to come on this channel, which it's not, it's not far off. Once he comes back, I'll drag him. I know I've prolonged this, but once he comes back, I will drag him. Do you fear for your, do you fear your kids would grow up as non-Christians since they don't go to church? Mm -mm, I don't. How do you cope with no WhatsApp calls? I don't want to say something that will implicate me here. Mm. Should be this an Instagram reply? Message me. Let's let's talk more. <laughs> I don't I don't know who is watching my video here in Saudi. What's wrong with the tap water in Saudi Arabia? Nothing is wrong with it. It's just hard. You can't drink it, but you do everything else with it. People cook with it. People bath with it. We bath with it. We do everything with it apart from drinking. Hard water contains certain minerals that... I don't want to go into the science. Just Google, please, my sister. Google it. Um, but I think it's not just in Saudi Arabia. From the last vlog that I talked about it, apparently... People who live in Dubai, Qatar, they are experiencing the same thing. Here in the Middle East, if you remove the tall buildings and everything, it used to be a desert. So, yeah. Congratulations, Diana, on your first year in Saudi. You're really a strong woman. What lessons have you learned? What lessons have I learned this year? I have learned the importance of communication. You know, I mean, it's not just opening my mouth to talk. It's understanding what communication means to another person. You know, it's not just with marriage, it's with friendship, it's with things that I used to take, I used to carry on top of my head. I don't anymore. Like... People are in different phases of life. So you just have to understand however they communicate with you. You just have to understand that communication is, I don't want to say circumstantial, but um, yeah, moving here or staying here has made me realize that you may not talk to somebody for one month. Doesn't mean that the person doesn't care. It doesn't mean that the person doesn't think about you. It doesn't mean that when you guys catch up, the way you guys talk about things, the way you guys catch on, you know, it's different. It hits different. You understand the person more. I don't know if it's distance or whatsoever. Um, even in marriage, I've learned a lot about communication. I used to be shit. Like, shit. I'm still shit. <laughs> I'm still shit at it compared to my husband. But I've learned. I've learned to... Yeah. The way I communicate now and the way I used to communicate, like, five, six years ago, 
things have changed. Another lesson I've learned this year is the importance of family. Um, I mean, I've always been a family-oriented girl, but maybe I, was, I took it for granted. I took, you know, a lot of things for granted, but coming here, it has made me, you know, just understand the real, the core values, the importance. Let me not use big grammar. I just understand now better the importance of family. And family may not just be by blood. It may just be sisterhood, strangers, friends. They are, they are strangers that treat you better than family. So yeah, understanding how important family is. Another thing I learned this year, I think this one came with turning 28. It came with this quarter life crisis that I'm still in. <laughs> I'm still trying to understand, you know, my late twenties a lot better is the power of silence. You know, things that used to make me yeah, like, I was the type that now is like, if before, if before you used to think that, Hey, mama Dinah, she just don't, she, she know the, she, she doesn't give two flying F's anymore. Now, <laughs> Make it hundred because if it's not something that I have control over or something that I know, like it's something that I can do and undo, if it's upsetting to me or if it's trying to trigger me, <laughs> I've learned that silence is a great emotion. It's a learned thing. You don't, you don't wake up and just go silent. It's a learned thing. There are times to open your mouth and there are times to shut your mouth. This year, hmm, you see that short mouth? Keep quiet. Just they look, just they look, or just go about your day, or just keep doing what you're doing. This year, it, uh, MSC, I've gotten MSC in that. The last but not the least question I will be taking today before we wrap up is what are your challenges living in an Arabic country and regards to your children? I'm not working. I'm a housewife, stay at home wife, stay at home mom, um, stay home mom. <laughs> so the challenges are not much. It's only this month that I kind of was a challenge because I've had to go out with the kids a few times and going out, staying in a village, you're required to some degree to know certain Arabic words, to get around, to do things, to feel accepted and all that. So, um, but I'm doing fine. I'm doing great. Um, yeah, that's all I have to answer for today because if I keep talking this video fits reach one hour and there are people who i know my viewers in nigeria who complain about data um but yeah if you have any more questions let me know in the comment section below what do you think about my makeup and hopefully i see you guys in my next video i don't like that this video just ended abruptly but yeah See you guys in my next one for now. Bye.